you are all here, and this is the time. We're going to go ahead and get this started because I know you guys have been patiently waiting. It is time for your Dragon Ball panel. Please give a warm welcome to four of the best voice actors I've ever heard in my life. Sunny Strait, David Mills, Chris Sabat, and Sean Shemmel! I want to. So I can hear Chris. Do you mind? Because I can't hear him. Come, come here. I can't hear him very well. Yeah, like, Sorry, on. David. I also don't want to be my friend. <laughs> I don't want to be my friend. Yeah. Super relaxed. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Guys, are we all excited that they're all here today? Yeah. Yeah. What in the room? Love it. We love all of you. We're so grateful you could all be here. Again, folks, you have the option of texting in your question. I'll be able to ask them. But I have a couple of firsts that I want to go ahead and ask. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> How many of you guys were in this panel last year? Do you, were any of you here for last year? Okay. We were the same panel, right? question. We were here last year. So, I think it was last year. It was last year. Yeah, yeah. last year. Because I was on, there was a table and Johnny Bosch at it, and I was like putting pictures of him like under the table, <laughs> up on there. And I, I found that I could actually send him questions when I wasn't even there. I could yeah. you know when his panel was and send them during his panels too. Which was really fun. <laughs> well, we are all here happy that you are here on stage with us. So I have some quick questions. Um, we're going to start off a little lighthearted and, and, and have fun with this before we get into some of the audience questions. But first. Uh, this is for all of you. If you could attend the World Martial Arts Tournament in the Dragon Ball world, which character from the series would you want to challenge in a friendly sparring match? <sighs> Mr. C. So easy. <laughs> so, well, for me, as, as Damon, no. No, even life. Mr. Satan would beat us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. even yeah. he would beat us. But <laughs> are we playing ourselves? Uh, uh, yeah, sure, play yourselves. Who do you think you could take on? As me? As you. Oh, man. Dude, I couldn't Not take even on. Yamcha. Yeah, I couldn't Not even take on the water. I could fight anybody in the very much. I could fight Chao Tzu because Chao Tzu is actually not a real <laughs> Maybe that farmer with the shotgun I could fight. Farmer with the shotgun. Farmer with the shotgun. But he has a shotgun. What about Corrin? Is Corrin a fighter? Corrin? Yeah, does Corrin fight? Corrin, does Corrin fight? Yes, he can fight. Oh, okay. He's got some fun. I would like to see King Kai have his Yoda moment and really do a serious fight. You know, when Yoda went all ballistic. Well, well, you know, it's, it's interesting that. because King Kai, because King Kai has so much, you know, he does so much, and yet we don't get to see. Him. I just realized that if I did a fight like that, imagine the fight reacts. Because I've never fought reacts as King Kai. Like it would be just King Kai fight reacting. Oh my God! Someone just recorded that, and you'll, it'll probably yeah, it's gonna be all over. <laughs> Someone have a mullet of sparking. Oh yeah, the King Kai fight reacts. Dude, pretty soon you can fart and it'll be in a game. It'll be like, burn. oh, we got it, it's in the game. Fist is fart, it's in the game. Instantly, yeah. like instantly. <laughs> <That's a laughs> <spectrum. laughs> I am excited for that day. Speaking of all that, because it sounded like you, you went on on a session there. Uh, who think, or who's had the longest yell session while they've been recording? It's gotta be those two. It's gotta be those two, yeah. Well, I think it's me, but I don't know. I mean, I don't, Chris is aware of his own work. I'm aware of my own work, and I feel like it's me. Yeah, it was definitely well, you. Because I had, because I, because remember, I also had to do all the times when the giant monkey screamed and was squeezing me, and I was going really ballistic on those screams when he was in pain. And then I had to do the fight with you and Majin Vegeta. And then I had to do the Super Saiyan scream. And then I had to do, geez, I can't do this. Um, I was like, no, I'm thinking of all the times I was like, I might have PTSD from screaming. I'm, like, no. I'm joking. I'm probably me. I'm guessing it's me. But here's the deal, though. Chris's one second of Sean screaming is worth like two seconds of Chris screaming because. Most voice talent will tell you, if you have to scream with your natural speaking voice, it's okay, but if you have to put on a raspy voice like Vegeta does, um, screaming like that, Chris is really having a hard time. Yeah, talking like that hurts. Yeah, it's really hard. Damon does a lot of impressions really well, and he told me, yeah, well, a while back we had another uh, game or something, and I had to do a lot of vibes for Krillin. Can you just do them? Because me? He's like, I can't do that. I can't, I can't do that. You can't do Krillin? Krillin. Come on, do Krillin. Okay, I'll do Krillin. Well, now you think my curiosity, who do you think you do the best impersonation of? Yeah, I got freezing this, so that happened. <laughs> 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 
Apparently, he has an impression of me that I have not heard yet. Have I had to let go? Can you go that low? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds right. I have a Sean power up that's almost there. Don't even. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. It's the, yeah? the freezer, freezer screams hurt because they're so hot. It's a yeah. like clench. And so they, the voice doesn't hurt, the screams don't hurt. Do you cheat to your falsetto? Because that's what I do. I think, yeah, okay. That's why I naturally said I'll just, just jump into the falsetto. The is so high, and I have to go shrill. 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 When we were dating on our recording, I was constantly doing an impression of, I would say, I would do an impression of Frieza, and then of course Damon would bring full on Frieza, and I could not work because I was laughing so hard. I was like, oh my god, it's really Frieza. Do it again, monkey. Yeah, he would say, do the line again, monkey. He would start calling me monkey while I'm working on Spot Zero. <laughs> do it again, monkey. Every time. Monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. It's so, a lot of fun. By the way, Damon directed all my work on Spot Zero, most of the main cast, if not, right? And he nitpicked the snot out of it. Um, yeah. And, and by the way, that game was really was really hard to work on because um, we had to keep track. I, I didn't realize that slightly changing my voice for all the forms was going to bite me in the ass 25 years later. <laughs> and so they, you know, even even Japan was not always aware of when what voice I was using for what. So they were relying on Damon to keep every single Super Saiyan three, Super Saiyan four, uh, Goku Black before he's Rose, Goku Black Rose. You know, all that stuff was really. We're constantly pulling up old video. You know, like. File PTSD. Oh yeah, you're, you're a file monster, dude. <laughs> so tired. So we have a question from the audience here, and this one is specifically for Chris. Chris, do you think Piccolo was a better father to Gohan than Goku would have ever been if you raised him? <laughs> well, look. You gotta give Goku some credit. He had a serious head injury as a child. <laughs> As did I. He also had no parents. He had no father figure, other than Grandpa Gohan, I guess. Perhaps. Did I? But so, you know, he didn't have a really good model for parenthood. He was just designed to be a fighter. Whereas Piccolo, they're tribal, they're, they're, they're meant to be, uh, they're communal, and like they look after their little ones. So it makes sense that Piccolo would, would do really well babysit and go on or whatever uh, but I don't know it's it's, it's hard to say it's, I mean, it's an easy thing to say like oh, yeah, Piccolo was a better father I think Piccolo was a better uh, mentor to go on in a lot of ways his father Goku was the one who pushed him to like his limits and I guess it was what about Uncle Krillin he was well, there the whole time oh yeah he's alright <laughs> he was pushing him. he's like okay I'll die and then you'll take some action okay go on <laughs> You, Krillin just finally gave up and married a robot. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Sophisticated blow up doll, I guess. Yeah. Goku, which is exactly what I was thinking when Goku was freaking out about it when he, when he came back for the tournament. He's like, Did you know she's wearing a robot? She's a robot. Don't ask too many questions. Well, and it's weird because Goku, 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 Goku. The problem is, I don't think Goku can do the math on that. You know what I'm saying? Because he doesn't even know what kissing is according to Dragon Ball Super. You know? You know how it works. And with the, the androids apparently had all the data from all of the, about all the Z fighters, right? Yeah. Including Krillin, probably. Yeah. And so how I like that. how Android 18 let you get away with naming your daughter after your previous girlfriend? <laughs> That's uh, that is how she you know she's a robot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she doesn't care about those things. Like, this is fine. Oh, I'm honored you named after your first girlfriend. Algorithmically, that makes sense. You must have nostalgic feelings for her. I'm okay with that because I'm an android. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next question came in, and this is for you personally, not your character. If you got the Dragon Balls, what would you wish for? Oh, God. <laughs> well, well, peace. Well, look, I don't agree that it's a stupid <laughs> caveat that you can't wish for more wishes in the wish realm, so I'm going to go for more wishes at some point. Um, but other than that, I have no idea. I would wish for a hot robot to come to life. <laughs> That's about to happen, bro. With AI and the robot. Seriously. It's about to happen. I want my hyperpod. I just would wish for more time in a day. Uh, like everything else freezes, yeah, true. but I get more time. True. Like you, you guys can do your thing. Yeah. And no one notices, but I, I just freeze time for a while. Like Groundhog Day for a while. I'm learning all these comments I want to do. And then, yeah, that'd be freaking awesome. Like that's 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 one that's other thing. thing. You know, to do the other, to do the extra clone work. yourself. Yeah, a clone of myself would be awesome. Yeah, I wish I had uh, enough abilities or powers to like 
I don't know what it would be. I guess you could do this Goku if you wanted to, but I, I wouldn't want to be Goku per se. But I want to be able to be able to go inside of a sun and hang out and look around, or and then it's to transmit myself to any part of the universe or galaxy without suffering the side effects of deep space, uh -huh. you know, black, or go inside a black hole without being ripped apart. Right? That would be really cool. Yeah, just to hang out looking around the black hole. God, the gravity's so dense here. The thing like, sucks though is that no one would believe you. No, they wouldn't. They would no. They'd be like meeting Bill Murray in the bathroom or something. You know? Just like those, the, the person who went to go get popcorn and went to the bathroom during the World Martial Arts Tournament, and then the whole stadium gets blown up, and then wished back, but then there's that one guy who's like, I swear, man, everyone was calm. We all died. Everyone was so calm. Like, I, was, I saw everyone die. And then a second later, everyone was back again. Weird. Who was the problem? Was the problem? Uh, I'd, also, I'd also wish it for the second half of Super. I know. That would be probably the first place. Yes. That'd be great. Yes, the rest of Super would be great. Maybe someday. We do have the next question here. This is from someone in the audience. If, if you could wear any Dragon Ball character's outfit, whose would you wear? I would wear Curlin's uh, white suit with the fedora and my uh, glasses. Yeah, I think I have worn that before. I like it when he does that with the tacos, the shirt. The oh, tacos I, have, shirt. I have had two taco shirts. Chris gave me one of them. I bought another one at a convention. Both fell apart after two washes. Really? There needs to be a high quality taco shirt. I agree. Yeah, you can get one. You get one. Um, man, I gotta say, like, Goku Blackers on Misty's outfit is pretty fire. That's I pretty fire. I didn't even think of that because I was thinking of Goku's outfit on Yard Rat, but once you said, yeah. once you said is Goku is Black's good. outfit, that's, yeah, that's yeah. a fire outfit. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys have a like, great taste. <laughs> Yamcha yeah, wore some sweet suits. That's true. Yeah. Like that big old yellow one. What about that bad man shirt? The bad man shirt. Oh, yeah. I mean, bad man. we could wear that IRL. <laughs> That's when he's trying to join a game. He's trying to join a game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so the next question is, uh, what are we here? Let's go with, if you personally lived in the Dragon Ball universe yourself, would you consider yourself a hero or a villain? Yeah. <laughs> I just have to think about that, but... I just well, I'd just be a voice actor in the Dragon Ball universe. Yeah. So I'd be just villain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just villain. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'd be just trying to voice act and watching Goku do. Oh, there's that guy saving people. I'm gonna get back to work. Yeah. Oh wait, no. <laughs> I'm doing his voice. <laughs> I like that, that everyone's worried. Like, was like weirded out that there might be aliens, right? Like Goku and Vegeta might be aliens. And yet, what, the, a dog is the mayor of their yeah. town, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some stuff walking around. I'd yeah. probably be one of those. Yeah. There's a oolong, he's a pig, he talks. And... Wishes for panties. I was just going to say. Uh, Marcos has a good question. This is for Sean Chevel. Which Super Saiyan form is your favorite? I like base form Goku, uh, which isn't a Super Saiyan form, I know. I, I, I feel the most connected to the character when Goku's hair is black and he's happy. Um, but I like Super Saiyan uh, Ultra Instinct, not Super Saiyan Ultra Instinct, I like Ultra Instinct, I like, what's well, not called that, but I mean like Ultra Instinct, I like uh, Red Hair God Mode, and uh, Gogeta from the Broly movie, uh, so those three, uh, yeah, that was, that's pretty much my favorite. I like the Red Hair God Mode because I love the fight I did with Beerus, and I noticed, I was talking to the, the Japanese producers, and I, I noticed, especially in his warm-ups, uh, during, uh, was that movie or was it Broly, during Broly, but and even when, even in uh, uh, the, the previous movie, I noticed that his martial arts warm-ups were different than Vegeta's. And I asked them, I said, "Is what's through a translator?" I was like, "Is his energy like he did the bubble trick with Broly, which I asked him if it was like a Jedi trick?" And they're like, "Yes, it's kind of like he's got psychic." You know, they're they're explaining to me it was a new power. And then I like the fact that with the red-haired mode, his warm-up's different, and instead of being so aggressively punchy, it's more Aikido-like, and it's more using the opponent's energy against them and stuff. At times, I mean, he still punches. But I noticed, and I thought that was really cool, that opening sequence, because Vegeta's warm-up was so clearly like him. And I love it when they clearly differentiate the characters. I don't love it when, it, you know, especially American producers sometimes would like to make Goku a little more like Vegeta. I'm like, no, 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 you can't have two Vegetas on the show. You know, Goku's gotta be the kid that never changes, and Vegeta's evolving and becoming a dad and, and dealing with, defending his woman, you know? Goku's just hanging out and fighting. Oh, those are kids? What? You know, like, <laughs> he doesn't even care, right? 
Anyway, that's a long answer to a short question. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's great. We love it. Uh, David, this is actually going to be for you. Yeah. Um, you actually uh, joined a little later on. Frieza is considered yes. one of the most iconic anime villains. Um, what? How was it like joining the show? Were you already a fan of the show? Yes. And was it kind of intimidating joining this uh, Very group? Very um, Yeah, so I joined in a different circumstance than these guys. Sort of, well, I guess in a way it's like, you know, similar, because we hired to voice match the previous great Christopher Harris. But to be clear, David, um, I want to give you some credit here, though. You worked with him and were kind of subbing for him at times, yes. and very respectfully understudying him, yeah. and also not trying to, you know, claim that no, thing. No, because you know? it, was Chris, it was Chris's part. It was his, yeah, you yeah, were so respectful, and I love it. And he was a you know, friend of mine, and, you know, we, we talked about him a lot, and he was like, always super sweet about it, super gracious, and shared the stage, and you know, I was really daunted because it's a huge part, you know, all you guys are fans of this, and I wanted to very much keep it as consistent and awesome as possible, because Chris's performance as Frieza was fantastic. And it was just a completely incredible moment. And that's Massachusettsville, like it just is very, very much is. And so I very, I listened to so much of Chris and so much of trying to, to replicate that to the best of my ability, but then also I think it's been like, God, it's been like seven, eight years now. I kind of like, it, while it kind of retains like that same voice type, there's certain things that like kind of didn't make my own, or just kind of, it just happens. We were a different person, and it's going to evolve. Yeah. And that would yeah. be we took over for the Canadian cast, etc. Yeah. You know, over time, it's going to be you, you know? Yeah. You're yeah. fantastic, yeah. fantastic too. Yeah. yeah. Well, well you, know, you would say that we replaced the Canadian cast. Yeah. So we, 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 we slowly did the same thing. Yeah. 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 Over time, yeah. So yeah, I mean, even these guys, like, yeah, I was, I've actually talked to Linda Young, who is, you know, the original foundation of Frieza, you know, she's, she joined in a very similar way, like, you know, matching the Canadian one. And so we both kind of share that commonality with um, each other. And we, I love her too, she's the best. Um, so yeah, no, really daunting, but I look forward to, you know, taking the role further and, and trying to honor Chris as best as I can. And I hope you guys have been enjoying it. And I've got a new game coming next week, let's go. Woo! Yeah. Very about the new game. So much yelling. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I do have a lot more Dragon Ball questions, but I'm just going to ask this one for me because there's no way I can have all four of you on here, and all of you have been on One Piece at one point. Yes. Um, you can guys, guys give that round of applause if you want. One Piece is amazing. One Piece. Um, you know, David, you actually was uh, Douglas Bullet and a variety of other characters, yes. Sean and Dr. Indigo, uh, Sunny as Usopp, and, and Chris as Zoro. Um, you know, it started in 1999, and obviously the manga is going to end soon. Um, you know, Chris, Sunny, this is for you two. How does it feel knowing that the end is coming for this? It's surreal, I think. I mean, it's going to be weird when we don't have it anymore, you know? It's, but the same with Dragon Ball. I mean, it's going to end someday. And then when it does, it's it's like a huge part of yourself. Now you know it's gone. Your identity for sure. It's disappointing for me because it took a long time for me to finally start watching One Piece, <laughs> <laughs> and I finally did. It's like anybody else. I'm like I'm not gonna watch a thousand episodes of shows. <laughs> my kids. Like, luckily, you got a pandemic. Exactly. Well, I, I wish I'd used the pandemic. That'd have been a great use of my time. But like my daughters and I are watching it, and we love it, and it's so good. Now I don't want it to ever end. It's See, I am personally thrilled because I'm not really on the show or the series. <laughs> and I'm all about Dragon Ball, and I want Dragon Ball to come back to Dragon Ball Super because I was in I was in the One Piece. I mean, the four kids uh, version of One Piece for a minute, which isn't really very good at all. And uh, I did some really bad voices on that. My Doctor Indigo performance is good, but I'm not really in the regular series, and so it's all been One Piece, One Piece, One Piece. And my attitude is, have your moment, One Piece, because when Dragon Ball comes back, it's on, <laughs> and I'm ready for it. So Super comes back, y'all are gonna be all right. Now, don't get me wrong, I love One Piece. I think it's cool. Actually, it's I really do. It's a great show, and I love I love this concept of just the concept of Luffy alone being stretchy like that. I I love that's like my favorite part. Right? Yeah. I um I really enjoyed my time because I've only we've done the movies really. Um, I did Film Goal, which as a <laughs> big head guy, um, that was actually my first Funimation game ever. Is that really? Yeah. Um, and then I did uh, One Piece Stampede, and Douglas Bullet is a monster man. Like he. That that role like wrecked me. That was so much screaming, so low in my voice. I mean, there's just so much fighting between me and Bullet. It's crazy. Um, but I had a great time. 
Well, we love all of you in it. Um, we'll go back to Dragon Ball now. This one's from Brody. Brody wants to know, what place from Dragon Ball would you want to visit and why? Uh, Yard Rat. Goku seemed to have a really good time there. Yeah. He, we didn't know much, but he gets a technique and he come back real happy, and he didn't seem to want to come back for a while. Yard Rat's a great place to visit because it, it costs you a lot to get there, but then you come back for free. For <laughs> 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 Yeah, the lookout would be pretty cool, to be honest. Like, that's, yeah. like, that's a big old, like, high up in the sky. It'd be awesome. I would visit Planet Dynamic, but, like, Ooh, that's two times, time. yeah. you know? I, I shouldn't visit it. Yeah, where the sky is green and the grass is blue. Not after I'm done. That, that is <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to visit, these, I'm visit these, these plainly named towns, like, North City. West City. City. West, West City. City. <laughs> Star City. I'm like, really? That's what they name the towns? <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's another question. There have been many successful and failed fusions. If your character could fuse with any other character on stage, not with one that they've already fused with, which one would it be, and do you think it would be a success or a failure? Yeah, it'd be 18 and we'd have a child. So, <laughs> you have to be on stage. Success. You have to be on stage. 18's not on stage. It's gotta be one of us three. Yeah. It has to be characters on stage. Oh, man. Fre Frieza. Would, well, I guess maybe Krillin, because they're similar heights. So. Frieza and Krillin, <laughs> both bald. It'd be but great. The, but Krillin would not be able to match Frieza's energy for the fusion, so it would yeah, do really uh, badly. I think Vegeta would fuse with uh, yeah, Frieza because... just to stab himself in the gut. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Why they got you, Frieza? <laughs> Krillin, I think, today is stronger than Frieza was back in the day. So if we could pull back... back Frieza could Frieza. match the energy, yes. Yeah, turn that, would match, that would be an interesting combination. Yeah. Is, he, is he as strong as that? Are we sure? Yeah, it's true, Krillin. <laughs> They're both bald, which is good. I'm Frieza. I have bald sometimes. <laughs> I would it'd be interesting to fuse with Frieza as Goku because they have similar power levels. Um, and again, Goku has hair, Frieza doesn't, so what would that hair look like? And then, uh, and I did, I am responsible for the alley oop moment. So we, they were kind of fusing in that moment. They were, they were friends for a second, you know. Frenemies. What if Frieza got free, what if fused with Goku and was like hating it before the fusion? Then after the fusion, Frieza's like, oh, I rather like this. <laughs> 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 Suddenly, I don't hate the monkeys anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but like, Frieza was just addicted to it, though. Like, yeah. feels again. Like, hey, dude, I think you're just getting weird. Yeah, yeah, Goku's like, oh, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> so this one is for Sunny. Sunny, do you enjoy doing more comedic relief, or do you prefer 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 more serious roles? Uh, I like both. You know. And that's what I like about Dragon Ball and One Piece, both. They, you've got these goofy characters, but you have the most serious moments that you've ever acted before. So as an actor, you just like whatever. You just like living somebody else, you know? And if, especially if they're a cool person to live. Yeah. And so this one's for everyone. Who do you think is the best driver between... <laughs> okay, who do you think is the best driver between the main Dragon Ball group? I'm always car canyon carving and telling them how to drive their cars better. I'm like, here's the torque band, this is where you want to be, you want to get a manual transmission. Like, I'm all about the drive. Oh, yeah. So, at high rates of speed. So that's 100% true. I, yeah. <laughs> my cars, I like them to be just like a lazy boy on wheels. I like to be as comfortable as possible, and I don't care how fast it goes. I'm kind of, I'm kind of like in between y'all, I think. I want us to be like a lazy boy with my legs so you can fast. Yeah, I can do that. I, I like to drive. But uh, I, I don't have a very fast car. I don't, I just, my Cooper's not too bad. But what about the it's fast. I don't, it's fast enough. Cooper. Yeah, our weight ratio is good. Yeah, I've raced people with it. Yeah. You know. I think your Cooper could fit in the back. Oh, I've raced race people in LA. Yeah. Yeah. When, I race, right. when I race people in LA, I always let them win. My logic is, I don't really want to win. I just, if anybody's going to crash first, it's going to be you. So I'll race them and I'll tail them, but I won't. I'll keep a good car length, and they think they're beating me. And I'm like, I'm letting them, because I'm like, cool, because you're ahead and you get to crash first, so I can see it and avoid it. <laughs> so, I never initiate the race, but I could get from zero to the speed limit really fast. Enough. I don't I don't initiate races ever, but you know. And then I stop at the speed limit, and then watch it pass me. <laughs> yeah. 
So this one's kind of cool. What is the strongest or loudest, and you don't have to do it now, what is the strongest or loudest Kamehameha you've ever had to do? None. <laughs> Sorry, I'm processing 500 episodes. Hang on a second. <laughs> I did one with Goku once, and uh, we had to, I had to match his level, so it was it was intense. Really? Yeah. We, we were looking for the uh, special uh, herbs for Master Roshi. Oh, we're trying to get weed for Master Roshi. Yeah, because yeah. it was totally weed. It absolutely it was. was. And then I used the Tell-A song when he when he got the cloud. But we, we were going, we were going. We gotta get the special flower. Oh, I'm trying to do your voice, but yeah. Gotta get the special flower. La -la, and, it, hit and it totally looked like weed. I was like, they're going to get weed for Baba, is what they're doing. Yeah, that's what they're doing. But we did a joint Kamehameha together. We did not have, there were no joints in that. There was no joints in that. We did not do a joint Kamehameha. We might have done well, a blunt what we Kamehameha. Oh, we, oh, I thought you were talking about an actual joint Kamehameha. Blunt Kamehameha. Okay. I've never done one. That's fine. Do one now. No! Do it as free as possible. Kamehameha, I'm doing some monkey. No. <laughs> <laughs> Those are huge, like, big bang Kamehameha, right? Oh, yeah, we did that one once, yeah. Well, you're Yamcha, too. Yamcha does that. Yeah. Actually, one of my favorite moments, yes. we, did a, we did a big Kamehameha, but, oh, but we were working on Super, and Goku and Vegeta had this crazy dual power-up. And when we were tracking it, um, I remember telling the engineer, I said, hey, I know the camera is on me, and, the, and, the, and I'm doing my scream in these waves, but it'd be better if we did it opposite, so then when the camera's on me, basically I set it up to where the waves went, yeah, and then you went, Aah! and then I went, yeah, because it was originally, it was originally shot to where we were doing it in unison, but it didn't look right with the camera work, so in my session, I said, I'm gonna do mine so I'm not with Chris, and then when he comes in, it sounds like we're doing this wave back and forth of this power up and super, and it ended up turning up. That was intense. That turned out really good. Sometimes we'll make choices like that in the booth if we can get away with it. Um, how many Kamehamehas have you done? All I, man, I, all I know is that I hate when I show up at a video game session, and it's like, oh yeah, here's eight Kamehamehas right out of the gate. Yeah, that's all like, And it's like, Kamehameha, Kamehameha, Kamehameha. Then just, ah, then cop me. I'm like, how many? They're like, like right in a row. I feel like every time I've worked with you, it's like you've literally had to do at least one. Yeah, at least one. Oh, yeah. Like, at least oh, one. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I, like, I wake up in the morning and I go, come on, come on, come I do it like in the line on, on Wizard of Oz. Come on, come on. Just like the line. Is that the good line voice on Wizard of Oz? Is that like tall yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> if you were playing the brand new Spark, uh, Spark Zero game, who yeah. would be your go-to team? Frieza, 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 Frieza. <laughs> Frieza. <laughs> Maybe Daddy. Or Captain Ginyu. <laughs> no, I don't want Ginyu on my team. He's so weak now. Uh, how about what? Daddy. Cooler. <laughs> Cooler. Father. <laughs> me. I usually always just play Vegeta, Piccolo, and yeah. Yamcha. Just, oh, you're good, you're good. Because you've got Vegeta, he's really strong. Piccolo is usually a character that has a lot of reach, and Yamcha is just a disposable character. And actually, you know what I love? Like, you play Piccolo, Vegeta, and Yamcha, and Piccolo and Vegeta only use Yamcha as an object weapon they throw yeah. at the other enemies. You know? <laughs> just throw him in front of the enemy. Yeah, he's, he's just fodder for Vegeta and Piccolo to use. So, uh, Sean and Chris, this is for both of you. The characters that you two voice have intertwined more than anyone else. So, here's a few rapid-fire questions for both of you, and just answer who you think the answer is. Who is the biggest prankster out of you two? Me. Hey, no, 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 wait, that's not the right word. Oh. Biggest prankster. I would say master prankster. Like, totally makes it an art form. This guy. Yeah. Well, now you're going to have to explain. Well, there are a number of stories I can think of. One is involving an actress who was on a show called, uh, I won't maybe mention, leave her nameless, but she, uh, Chris had decided to prank her in New Zealand by walking, we were at late, out late, and she was already in bed in her room, and we knew it was her room, and you put a tag outside for what you want for breakfast, and she was an actress and model, and so uh, he would like, ordered like 10 orders of pancakes, and bacon and all kinds of all of a shit ton of food because you can leave you can leave the tag outside the door and then they bring your food in the morning so he picked up the tag and he added a whole bunch of food. A she lot got, of bacon. And she got him back by hiring him a stripper, um, which was really funny. She could totally make it, but it was very funny because I was we required both to shoot it to each other's room. Yeah, both sent to each other's rooms. This is like in 2002 or 2001, maybe it was like a long time ago. And then I remember they go, can you shoot it, Sean? And there was no phone camera, so I had a camera. I'm watching Chris be really embarrassed. And there's like 
you know, 10 people or whatever. And then at some point I, I realized I needed to not film. And then I left. And I don't remember what that point was. Well, <laughs> I do remember that. And that person, which we won't name, they were like Hollywood actresses. Yeah, they were Hollywood, yeah. They, but they were the type like, come to dinner with us. Yes. Yeah. And come with me with my boyfriend, uh, the shock or whatever his name yeah, was. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and actually almost said his real name. Like, come with me with my boyfriend or whatever. And then you get halfway through dinner and you're like, wondering why they're so weird. And then you realize they've like dropped LSD right before dinner. And yeah. Like, what are you doing? Like, why and we're new, we're new in our careers. So like, we're new to acting. We're new to this. We're not used to this kind of uh, uh, debauchery. We so haven't been invited to Diddy's house. Yeah. <laughs> I do not I have a question, follow-up question. Male or female stripper? Oh, it was definitely female. Yeah. Oh, okay. Female stripper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I now, for, if she had gotten you a male, that would have been really funny. But <laughs> uh, next question. Who takes more time between you two in the record, uh, recording your lines? I mean, what do you mean? Who takes more time <laughs> recording their lines? I don't know, because we don't record next to each other, so Chris or Damon would know the best because they directed both, all of us, yeah. I'm probably lo slowest, probably, nowadays. Yeah, yeah you take longer. I take longer, Because yeah. you, over, you overthink stuff. Probably, you overthink. Yeah. Or you just think about it. I, I don't think about it at all. I, I mean, I do my fight reacts fast, though. Oh, I yeah, I do those fast. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, who gets to their lines first, and who gets to them last? Who gets to them last? Yeah. Oh, I do my lines first because I don't want to... Yeah, I always record first. Yeah. David's like, are you going to... Hit the deadline. Yeah, I'm, are you gonna do the no thing? Problem. I mean, that's the thing. I'm like, I'm not super worried because you do it. You just you've done this so long. Me, I go first. I'm like, I just want to get out of the way. It's like, I'm done now. So yeah. I, go to I guess this next one's for the directors as well. Who breaks character more? Who breaks character? Well, when you're done, when you're doing a show though, you don't really you break, don't character break character because right? because you're doing your take and then you're breaking character in between all that times. So, yeah. And if you break character during your take, you just re-record. So it's not. It's not like being on camera. It's yeah, it's not, you know, it's not like being on SNL or anything. Yeah. We all do. Yeah, or people will mess up or whatever, or fall out of voice. Sometimes there's like obscure characters that will come back, and you have to like make sure they stay within that voice or like find that voice reference. Like, what did that character sound like from like 20 years ago? I don't remember. Let's find out. Uh, okay, so this one is. Uh, I, I guess this this person wants it for Sean. Uh, Logan wants to know what, in your personal opinion, is Goku's strongest form in history. Oh, it's more strong form. form? Strong form. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, is that Logan talking from the audience? Uh, telling Logan, where are you question? at? Where are you at, Logan? Strongest form in history? Or someone answering the question for Logan? Oh, it's Logan way over there. It's that little, it, is that the little Goku? Yeah, right there's there? Goku. All right, Logan. Strongest form is probably Ultra Instinct, is my guess. That's probably. And, or any god mode. Anytime he's a god, you know, when he, and he's fighting Beerus. But I'm guessing Ultra Instinct is probably. It hasn't been fully articulated. I know it has in the manga, but I haven't read it yet, so it hasn't fully been, for at least for me, sussed out in terms of the limits of the power, but I know he's Ultra Instinct, at least when I'm playing it, it seems like the most powerful thing. Uh, this one's for Chris. Uh, I guess this is for, for One Piece. Yes, it is. Um, which is your favorite sword style for fighting? I mean, three, because that's what he does most of the time. There was a nine sword style like that he did, once or twice, which was pretty cool. But I'd say all uh, my absolute favorite was the no sword style that he did. He literally did was like no sword style, and he just cut someone without his swords. I was like, that's pretty cool. He uses his teeth. I like this one. Oh, this is for everyone. Who do you personally think would win in a fight, Beast Gohan or Broly? Oh, damn. Uh, Beast Gohan. Beast Gohan. Yeah. Because yeah. he's smarter. Yeah. He's had more training. I was still thinking about Goku versus Beast Bro Gohan. Broly baked up. Because Goku's been, well, yeah, Broly <laughs> baked up. But it's a lot of power. Um, probably Gohan, but only on a, only on a technicality and probably on sheer power. Probably. But Gohan's all super smart, collegiate. And oh, yeah. Broly's like, I like water. There's also that, <laughs> that, that, that Beast form is kind of new and we don't really you know, test it. You know? It's untested. Yeah. He'll probably summon his army of Super Saiyan ants. And uh, <laughs> those ants. Yeah. yeah I don't know. <laughs> the movie, that'll, that'll be his backup. I like this question. This one's kind of fun. In which, your uh, personal opinion, do you think, uh, out of your characters that are here on stage, who do you think would outdrink 
the others and start a bar fight. Is it like actors or the characters? The characters, the characters. Yeah. Yeah, Pretty soon we get wine drunk. <laughs> Goku would because he doesn't drink and he would not know when to stop and he would just be just this tastes great I love this let's just keep drinking and then he'd be mad you don't fight me enough Vegeta every time you want to fight you're crazy you're kicking the bull and I gotta go home and change it and I'd be like so mad that you won't fight with me all the time and then he starts punching you come on fight me come on fight me Vegeta like wouldn't it be great I think Vegeta would wouldn't even need to have drink the drinks to start a bar fight like that actually the best part is he would just stop like, what would Trunks Reason do? Trunks Reason would make up with everyone and say that the reason and she's fighting and attacking everyone or she's fighting and attacking everyone was because, was because he just wants to be part of the Z Fighters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he wants a hug, you know. Just want to be loved. <laughs> That's what would happen. Someone in the audience has asked if you could describe your character in only one word. What would it be and why? I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking. Sorry. They're, they're putting you guys to the ring. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about I was gonna think of the word or how you say the word. <laughs> you know? Because Goku says a lot without one word and suddenly the panel was over. I would say um, a grilling is courageous. Oh, this is something that they would say or something we could describe. Yeah, courageous, yeah. Courageous, yeah. I would say courageous would be a homes but was stupid because of, because of the whole Frieza moment, you know? Like, why did you even get close to Frieza? Why did yeah. you, what were you thinking, you know? Yeah, what were you okay, thinking? Okay, had a dumb moment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you did. It wasn't exactly courage as much as it was levitation. So I know this is a little bit of fan casting here, but someone asked, do you think All Might would be able to take on Frieza? <laughs> For about an hour. Time. Um, yeah. And then he'd cough up blood and it'd be over with. So. <laughs> um, and, then, and then I have one more, because we're almost out of time already, unfortunately. Um, but this one was a really good one, and I saved it way down here. Okay, did you, did any of you ever get to meet Akira Toriyama? And uh, if so, what did you get to ask him? I met Akira Toriyama, but it was, and this was a long time ago. This was like, I think either 1999 or 2001. If you look it up, it was the launch of Shonen Jump magazine in the United States. And I had gone out there and I really didn't, at this time, remember, we're, there's no internet. We're still getting our materials from Mexico. I, I don't know a lot as much about Dragon Ball as I probably even should. It's, it was complicated, we didn't have a lot of resource material. And I met him, and he was extremely nervous, because he was, he was a, he doesn't like to, he's not a guy that really liked to leave his house very much. And uh, I just remember shaking his hand and saying, just like, they were introducing him to me, and I was like, oh, that's cool, well nice to meet you, I'm Chris, I worked on the dub. And that's basically all that was said between us. Uh, but the, the best question was asked of him during the Oh yeah, I remember this. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't there, but yeah. Someone raised their hand during the panel. I, I actually, my guess is they were pre-prepared or they were asked in advance, but somebody uh, asked him what happened to launch. And he said, oh, I forgot. <laughs> you forgot about launch. So I want a movie, Resurrection Hell. Yeah, bring back launch. Well, we I, I absolutely love having you guys here. It's been an absolute blast. Uh, all of them are going to be at their tables all weekend long. Um, before you guys go, do you mind if we get a big picture with you guys of the audience behind you? Is sure. Right? Okay. Can I say it? Just one yeah. thing. Go ahead. And, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Please come to my table after this. <laughs> uh, okay, great. I don't know where our social media guy is. Oh, too bad. Angel, oh, there's Angel. I mean, I got news for you. You won't see anybody in the audience. Uh, we're going to bring up the lights. Oh, yeah, yeah. If we can bring up the lights in the house, please. Um, and then I, I can have you guys stand right over here, and he's going to get up behind you guys, and I'm going to step out of the way. All right. Give me a chair. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you start telling them how you want them, and I'll get you a chair. Thank <laughs> you.